Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with deeply lodged, wedged in earwax in this, their left ear. They attended in considerable pain, what we call lotalgia, and they were really struggling to hear as well. They were also experiencing tinnitus as a result of this wax impaction. Tinnitus is, uh, for anyone who's not aware of the term or the condition, it is a noise or sound uh, or sometimes even a sensation that um, originates with inside the ear or inside the head. So it's not an external sound that you're hearing. Um, uh, many of us suffer from tinnitus now and again. I, I know I do after a long day or from uh, really fatigued and tired. Um, others can get it all the time, unfortunately. And um, as some people who experience all the time, it can be really debilitating and frustrating and troublesome for them. Um, now, it's true to say that there's no magic cure for tinnitus. There's no, for example, uh, medication or surgery, but there are many different causes for tinnitus, wax being one, as you can, as I've just highlighted here. Um, underlying hearing loss can lead to tinnitus. Um, certain foods, diets, stresses, lifestyles, uh, medications, um, they can all have a attributing factor as to why an individual may suffer from tinnitus. So if you are experiencing tinnitus, I would most certainly recommend just visiting your uh, GP and audiologist, have them examine your ears just to rule out any obvious potential causes such as earwax or an ear infection, for example. And um, particularly so if you've got what we call unilateral tinnitus, so tinnitus um, in one ear, or asymmetrical tinnitus, so you do have it bilaterally, but it's more pronounced and obvious in one ear. In addition, if you have pulsatile tinnitus, so um, kind of a rhythmic beating type of tinnitus, it can be cardiosynchronous, so you, you could hear the pulsatile tinnitus is in sync with your pulse heartbeat. Most definitely, you need to get that examined and checked. Um, if you get tinnitus uh, for a couple of like minutes a day and it's non troublesome, then um, and it, um, even if it is unilateral, I wouldn't be overly concerned by that because it's very short lasting, it's infrequent. Typically, we say if you have tinnitus, if you're experiencing tinnitus more than five minutes a day. Um, and if it's in one ear, for example, as, as I alluded to, um, do get that further investigated. The reason for that, the, one of the um, red flags um, of having unilateral or asymmetrical tinnitus is having a benign tumour um, actually growing on the, the, the balance nerve. So the your vestibular system, your balance system, the organ of balance they're called the semicircular canals, they form a labyrinth with your organ of hearing, the cochlea. And the audio-vestibular nerve, the eighth cranial nerve, consists of the, the balance nerve and the hearing nerve, and they're somewhat intertwined. And you can get a, a benign tumour called a vestibular schwannoma, so it's non-malignant. Uh, it develops on the, the balance nerve, but it can grow and compress against the auditory aspect of the nerve of the audio um, cochlear vestibular nerve and that can lead to a hearing loss in that ear and also um, tinnitus and also vertigo. I've had instances in the past where patients have been diagnosed with this vestibular schwannoma. It takes up another name called an acute neuroma and they the only symptom they had was tinnitus. They didn't have any hearing loss, they didn't suffer from vertigo. Um, so um, you can never be uh, too safe. Um, the typical um, action plan for that diagnosis plan is you should be referred for if there's no obvious reason for uh, earwax or anything like that um, you should be referred for an MRI scan and of the internal auditory matus where they can actually um, check to see whether you've got uh, this acoustic neuroma the MRI scans are very specific and sensitive so they're the best um, diagnosis tool and if you do have an acoustic neuroma, um, it is quite rare. I can't give, I think it's one in a thousand or even the prevalence is even less than that. Uh, but 10%, if you are diagnosed with that, 10% of those actually grow. So one in 10. And of course, if they do grow, because your ears are located just beneath your brain, um, there will have to be some sort of 
treatment um, performs and the um, surgery. So they call it gamma-nice surgery, where they attempt to shrink the acoustic neuroma. Um, so you, you do need to definitely um, seek medical or healthcare advice from your GP, um, physician, ENT, audiologist. If you have unilateral tinnitus, asymmetrical tinnitus, or pulsatile tinnitus, so a pulsatile tinnitus again can be caused for uh, due to many uh, possibly serious underlying uh, pathologies. You could have a glomus tumor, so a tumor growing, um, sending from the um, in the middle ear, so behind the ear, and from the floor of the the middle ear. So that definitely needs to be investigated. If you have a glomus tumor, you can, uh, as the audiologist or the GP, you can normally examine your ears and. You can normally see this um, red mass developing, originating from from behind the eardrum, from the floor, and that has its own um, blood supply, so in pulse, and you're actually hearing that glomus tumor pulsing away. Um, another potential reason for um, pulsatile tinnitus is a blocked carotid artery, so uh, the main artery to the brain. So you definitely um, need to get that examined. Uh, going back to the patient, um, you probably just saw on the first left there, we managed to get that wedged wax really deep. The patient had a very narrow, twisty ear canal uh, as we approached, especially medially towards the eardrum, and I managed to wedge that out. The right side, this is the right side, it's semi-occluding. I managed to get the wax out. I'm just going to mop it around the edge. There's a few loose hairs. I managed to get a few out, as you just saw there. There was a couple more. They're, they're very close to the roof of the ear canal. I've left them there because they weren't going to vacuum. And it would mean me going with forceps, trying to delicately prise them away. They weren't causing the patient any problems, so sort of risking causing trauma to the delicate skin that lines the ear canal because we're approaching it with the forceps. So I decided to leave that. I'm just mopping up near the entrance. This is the cartilage portion. Um, and we can apply a bit of pressure here because it's got a thick layer of skin, about a millimetre in thickness. And the cartilage itself, it's flexible, it's not rigid, it's it's not as sensitive as the bony part. So now we're approaching the bony part of the ear canal. This is about um, a third of the way in. And here we've got to be careful. I'm just hovering over this skin. It's coming away, as you can see. So the moment it stops coming away, I'm just going to leave it. Uh, it's not going to um, cause the patient any significant issues. Similar to the left, they have got a narrow ear canal here. Um, the eardrum veers off to the right, so the ant it's got a prominent anterior recess. As we approach the eardrum, most of our ear canals, they narrow and they widen again. And that's, that narrowing occurs about half a centimetre away from the eardrum. We call that the isthmus. And when the ear canal widens again, it can create a recess to the right, you can see there, um, and also inferiorly to, to the floor of the eardrum. We call that the inferior recess. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.